Hey guys, Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thank you very much for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys with a video I really wasn't planning on doing. I was actually uh, in the middle of editing a whole other video. And I just started going through some of the Cybertruck uh, comments. And I started paying attention to this over the last few days, really. And it's just been something I've been thinking about. And I just want to reiterate some of the points that I made that are really, really clearly lost on, uh, on a lot of people, to be totally honest with you. Uh, when I look at this truck, I'm viewing this as, as a truck, the same level I would basically view any truck, uh, whether it be uh, a Ford Ranger or uh, a Ford F450. A truck is a utility vehicle that's built for, uh, uh, well, really, a variety of purposes. The idea is you could buy that truck and turn it into whatever you need it to do for you, uh, be it uh, construction, be it uh, first responders. Uh, it, it needs to be able to do a lot of things and do all of those things well. So what I notice is people are just going into some things that really don't, don't matter. I'm not saying that it's not an impressive engineering feat, but just because somebody invents something or does something different doesn't make it better. It just makes it different. And that's kind of my opinion with the Cybertruck. Basically, everything that I'm talking about with the Cybertruck is design, not the shape of it, not the fact that it's being a triangle, but design and engineering. If you're going to invent something or reinvent something and come to market, you need to take what's currently out there and see how it's being used. What are the use cases of these these vehicles in this case? And how can I make a better mousetrap? I've seen people commonly go to, this truck is going to be built for families who may decide that um, they didn't have a truck previously because they didn't like the fuel economy. And now they're going to look at this truck and decide to, I don't know, get rid of their Model 3 and go up to a Cybertruck. So my point is, this Cybertruck didn't have to be the large truck that it is. A few of the comments I read had to do with, uh, well, it's, it's self-driving and you don't have to worry about the size. And that's fine. Even if the thing parks itself, you're still going to find yourself at the grocery store at Home Depot in a tight spot where you can barely open the doors. I deal with it now with my truck. It's, it's a common pain point for truck owners. There's a trade-off of having a large truck and trying to get it into parking spots at work and, and all that. Doug mentioned all that watch his video. It was it was uh, a very good uh, second take, basically, of his first video. Now, my second point is the one that I know the most. This is contractors, blue collar. Basically, every commercial you've seen for a pickup truck in America, the person that those commercials are talking to, those are the people that I know. Those are the people that I, I, I've been working with forever, and I'm very, very familiar with what uh, what people are looking for. When I was out on a job site today, uh, it just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, you know what? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You see these trucks and these guys, there's toolboxes in almost every single one of them. There's ladder racks on a bunch of them. There's tool bodies on a bunch of them. There's truck beds full of equipment. Uh, it's just, th this is the, the use case of pickup trucks in America when it comes to people that are using them and putting them to work. This is where the Cybertruck falls flat on its face. The design of it is where it just doesn't work. One thing people, most people don't know is that if you put stickers on the side of your truck that say ABC contracting, the second you have a logo on the side of that truck, it has to be registered with DOT. And part of registering it with DOT as a business is your insurance is going to be higher and your registration is going to be higher. They charge companies more for these things. So with the cyber truck and in the current truck market, what you see a lot of is people putting magnets on the side of their trucks. With the cyber truck, well, you can't use magnets because it's, it's stainless steel. Magnets don't stick to stainless steel. So the ability of kind of sneakily advertising your company on the side of your cyber truck without registering it uh, with a DOT number becomes a lot more difficult. Now you actually have to permanently affix your logo on that truck. Uh, another issue, back to magnetics, is uh, a lot of contractors out there they throw up the magnetic light bars on the roof, and it's something that when you are done with the truck, you pull it off, you sell the truck, there's no holes in it, everything's fine. Well, you can't do magnetics again on the cyber truck because it's stainless steel, it's not going to stick. So people have been saying, oh, it's stainless steel, so you can weld to it. That's awesome. You can just weld some accessory on there, and then it's affixed, it's, 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 and then when you're done with it, zip it off, 
And that is the most asinine thing I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> you can weld stuff onto current trucks. People don't do it because it's unnecessary and you don't have to because they've been designed not to do that. I've actually worked for a contractor that would not buy Ford F-150s because they had an aluminum roof and you can't put magnetic light bars on them. So if you don't think people are, are taking these things into consideration, they 100% absolutely are. Uh, the other thing with the Cybertruck, and I've actually done this on a video, I did a review on a full-size light bar on my pickup truck uh, maybe last year sometime. They have strapping that comes over the hood, wraps around, and then you actually uh, screw it into the, the, tr the body of the truck from the underside so even those holes that are left aren't visible to the average person. With the Cybertruck, the windows don't have a, a jam at the top, so there's there's no header. Those windows just roll up into the door frame, and because of that, now you can't even put a light bar like that on it, so you're left with only being able to weld it on there. Um, not going to find a whole lot of people willing to start uh, welding on the frame of their truck or the exoskeleton, fancy word for unibody, uh, and then be willing to take an angle grinder to it to cut these things off and, and hope they don't destroy the exoskeleton of their Cybertruck, which is also, by the way, the finish of the truck. It's a stupid solution caused by the design of the truck. It's not, it, it's, it's not making anything better. It's not a better mousetrap. It's, it's causing more hurdles. Uh, this also applies to ladder racks. You can't, uh, you'd have to weld the ladder rack on there. Aside from that, you'd have to weld that ladder rack to the outside of the truck because you have that built-in tonneau cover that if you want to use it and you put a frame uh, frame rails to the inside of it for a ladder rack, well, now you can't close the bed, and that's part of the selling point of the vault, which is just a fancy word for tonneau cover, on the back of that truck. So, yeah, uh, again, ladder racks, I can't see people welding ladder racks onto these trucks. It just doesn't... Uh, it doesn't make sense. A tool body, not even an option because well, if you can't remove the bed, you can't put on a tool body. So that goes away. Uh, so those guys can't buy it. So that's my rant on construction, but uh, in contractors in general with the Cybertruck. Now I'll leave this video on a, a, a pleasant note. I will say the tent on the back of the truck I've done on these road trips Personally, I don't like spending money on hotels when I'm just going to pull into the parking lot, go lay in bed, sleep, get up, at first light, hit the road again. It's just a huge waste of 100 bucks. I'd rather sleep in my truck. I've done it uh, countless times. And the camping setup with this truck, it's pretty cool. I look at it like this. You could put a, a, a blow-up mattress in the back of this, this thing with the tent that they've shown on their website. You could sit and enjoy the stars and, and have a beautiful view of the sky. And then when it's time to go to bed, you can close your vault tonneau cover. And because it comes down at an angle, you're not going to feel like you're stuck in a coffin. So uh, basically, you could sleep in your truck and be totally secure in the bed of your truck. And then when you wake up in the morning, open the vault. And now, you know, you're in a tent. And, you know, so kind of a cool way to protect yourself from the weather. And um, I don't know. I, I do think that there's some some arguments that it would be a cool thing to buy if you're not going to be hauling a, a, a trailer, but you wanted to take it on weekend camping trips or um, or you were going to be hauling a trailer and didn't care about the stopping for a dozen hours to charge on a 2,000 mile trip. Um, you know, maybe, maybe there's some usage there, but the whole idea is if you look at this truck truly objectively, I'm not coming at this as a Tesla hater. I'm not even coming at this as a Cybertruck hater. If you love it, I have no problem with people loving this truck. I'm coming at it from a, what did this design do and how did it make it better? Just going to an EV is not unique. It's something that, you know, Rivian's actually going to beat them to market uh, in with a, a more traditional pickup truck that fits a lot more of the use cases I'm talking about. I could see somebody as a contractor throwing a toolbox in that truck. Uh, the only reason why I'm talking so highly of Rivian is because I think they've just put together a better mousetrap to get people to go into EVs for pickup trucks. It, it's really that simple is, is, is my approach. So guys, with that being said, I'm done with the Cybertruck. This is something that unless some sort of major groundbreaking thing comes out where there's some massive design overhauls, I might put some input in there, but
So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.